the La Sombra described their forefather's life as unremarkable. He was always close to darkness, and when the Great Flood came, he enjoyed it. Some might say he even reveled in it. And when the waters receded, La Sombra, the clan founder, joined his brethren in the second city until the great revolt against the second generation vampires, which they were then all judged by Cain. Now in the lead up to the revolt against the second generation vampires, the Ventru are quick to point at the La Sombra. They say that La Sombra himself was jealous of Ventru, who was the supposed rightful leader of the third generation. The La Sombra themselves, they don't really have much to say on the matter. There are just so many things that not even the La Sombra know about La Sombra. It's not even known who the identity of his sire is. One thing is known though, there was a deep connection between the sea and La Sombra and the La Sombra clan. If you think about the stereotypes of vampires sleeping in water, this is something that the La Sombra are drawn to. It more so happens in the elders of the clan than it does for the neonates, but the older you get as a La Sombra, the more draw or the more connection you feel to water. After the fall of the second city, La Sombra returned to the sea. He settled on an island in the Mediterranean. It is not known which island La Sombra went to, but it is believed to have been Malta. It is from here that La Sombra built up a pirate army. Pirates are already fairly cool, and they can be pretty scary, but imagine a ship full of vampire pirates. And with this pirate army, he began attacking ships, civilizations, ports, all belonging to his brethren because he was still fairly jealous. Even though La Sombra was giving marching orders to his ships, sailing orders? Sailing orders. Even though La Sombra was giving sailing orders to his ships, he wasn't seen very much during these days. Every so often he would arise from his slumber. He would guide his followers, his worshipers. He would hunt for food. And very rarely, he would embrace a select chosen few. La Sombra's moods would change after a volcanic eruption blackened the sky. No one is sure why he decided to deny his inner callings of the sea and travel inland, trying to find others that were worthy of his embrace to become his childer. La Sombra would eventually return at the start of the Roman Empire. He would also take residence in Sicily himself, building a castle. This was a very powerful tomb fortress, and his followers would eventually know to call it the Castle of Shadows. He locked himself inside this fortress. He was surrounded only by a very select, hand-picked crew that would advise him. He would meditate constantly about the abyss. And every so often, La Sombra would awaken not say a word to anyone, and he would hit that like button and that subscribe button with the bell notification. I want to talk a little bit about La Sombra's fortress, his main home that he used throughout most of the Dark Ages. But before I do that, if you haven't seen it yet, I do have a store of shirts like this are available. As you can see, I am totally not a vampire. And when you have a shirt like this, you can also let others know how not a vampire you are. Castle de Umbro resides on the coast of Sicily near Syracuse. And for a very, very long time, this castle served as the haven not only for La Sombra himself, but also for the rest of his clan. La Sombra would put himself in torpor and consider the mysteries of the abyss. I believe he was trying to weaponize it or trying to integrate himself with it in some way. When he wasn't contemplating the complexities of the abyss, he was advising and guiding his clan. Throughout history, many actions, many events happened which forced members of the clan La Sombra to seek refuge or start pilgrimages to the castle. For example, the Court of Blood was in some turmoil after they had failed in their shadow Reconquista. This was trying to end Islam in the Iberian Peninsula. And let's of course not forget the Crusades. Unfortunately, this palace of power, this 
ominous presence was not meant to last, as in 1405, it was attacked by Anarchs and the Asomites. And for all of La Sombra's careful planning on who he decided to embrace, one of his own childer were at the head of this attack. It is also widely believed that this childer diablerized La Sombra himself. And this childer goes by the name of Gratiano. Now the La Sombra clan, they got involved through the Dark Ages with several religious organizations, and this eventually led to a split within the clan. They were deeply involved within the Catholic Church as well as the religious institutions of Islam. This is what led to the Shadow Reconquista. Now, according to clan legends, it was Gratiano de Veronese who was the one who slayed La Sombra. Gratiano was also the last child that La Sombra embraced. This particular rebellion, the members had rejected the Convention of Thorns. They viewed the terms of it as submission to another clan, and they were not having any of that. Sabat so scholars, they feel that La Sombra sealed his fate when introducing Gratiano into the clan, or embracing him into the La Sombra clan. This was done against the advice of one of La Sombra's most trusted advisors, Montano. Some other scholars also believe that La Sombra had a different plan, but unfortunately for him, it just didn't pan out, and we will ultimately never know for sure. Regardless of what happened, it is widely believed that Gratiano is the one who diablerized La Sombra. There is one tale that is fiercely denied by the Sabbat, and put down very quickly if this ever comes public. It says that La Sombra allowed himself to be diablerized. Why would he do such a thing? He was looking to free himself from his mortal body. He was looking to send his soul into the abyss to become one with it, to meld and bind with it, to try and control it. While La Sombra himself was a very powerful antediluvian, what he didn't count on, though, was running into creatures that regarded him as insignificant within the abyss. At least this is part of the tale that is spun. And it is believed that he is still looking for a way to control the abyss. And it is believed that those who command obtenebration are being used to relay information back to La Sombra in the abyss so that he can find a way to achieve his goal. If you would like to learn more about Clan La Sombra, then please click on the video on your screen now. I would like to thank my new patron supporters who have joined me, and Derek C for joining at the Maple Wolf level. I never did properly announce you, so sorry for the delay in that. My name's Nathaniel. This has been The Maple Table. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.